I talked to my husband and I said, I'm going to join Emmy's program. And he said, well, whatever makes you happy, that's fine. <laughs> Go for it. And so I did. And um, it was the best thing I ever did. I've learned so much from it. Honest to God, I thought I knew a lot until I got on your program. I lost about 17 pounds and it was literally effortless. Hello my honeys, it's Emmy. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Emmy. I'm a nutritionist and the creator of the Slim on Starch program. To learn about how you can join the Slim on Starch program, you can go to healthyemmy.org. Also make sure to hit subscribe and turn on the notification bell because I upload a new video every Wednesday and Saturday. Today I am introducing you to my client, Amy. Amy is nearly 50 years young, which when you look at her, you're not going to believe, especially because she has four kids and she's currently taking care of her 11 month old nephew. She has got her hands full, let me tell you, and bless her heart because her husband is currently serving our country on the other side of this planet. So Amy really has her hands full and I was so grateful that she even took the time to share her story with you guys. So first and foremost thank Amy for sharing her story and she is such an inspiration because where she's coming from is a place that so many of us can identify with she had watched the documentaries she had read the books she had tried this diet on her own but there were just so many things going on I mean she's a mom of four plus one she's taking care of all these people she worked for all of these years she wasn't able to take all of this stuff that was spinning around and put it into practice. But when she did, because there were a few pockets of time where she did put it into practice, she still had some lingering fears from the diets she had done in the past. So she always had these 10 or 15 pounds that she wanted to get off. There was so much information swirling around. And even when she took that information that she had from reading the books and watching the documentaries and putting it into practice, she still had the fear of, well, keto says that you can't have potatoes and can I really eat all this? Should I all eat all of this? And then it would end in some form of self-sabotage. So she just wasn't able to lock everything into place and needed somehow to take everything, just make it so simple, put it into place, get these last 10 to 15 pounds off and be done with it. And guess what? She did exactly that. She was able to get that weight off. She looks fantastic. She glows. She is happy and she is healthy. Let's get into it with Amy. My name is Amy. I'm 49 years old. I have four kids. I have a husband that is currently serving our country in the military. So he's actually not here. I have the four kids here at home that I'm raising. I also have a nanny to my um, 11 month old little nephew that keeps me really busy too so it's crazy i'll start from the beginning i've tried many many diets since high school through college and then i had my four kids like i would gain like 60 pounds with all my pregnancies and eventually i would lose it and i always was like 10 to 15 pounds heavier than i wanted but it was like killing myself through like low carb and very restrictive and I never could really keep it off. It would usually come back slowly and I noticed none of my clothes fit anymore. I'm like, and I was like, ah, oh, I couldn't believe it. None of my clothes were fitting and that was the most irritating thing. So I tried keto again and I, just the same old thing, keto, keto. Everybody always talked about how keto was so wonderful, but I, it was so hard. I, and, uh, it was very, very difficult to lose any weight. I had to literally have, practically have no carbs and I love carbs. So it was really hard on me. Um, but the way that I found Emmy was I had a doctor's a regular physical um, a couple, like two years ago. The girl came in, did my blood pressure and um, did it two more times. And then she sent the doctor in and she did it again. And she said, you need to go to the emergency room. You have dangerously high blood pressure you're gonna have a stroke i had no idea i was like oh oh my god it was real it was a major like wake up call i was very very scared and nervous i, I got on the right medications 
but I try at from that moment on, I'm like, I'm not going to worry much about, I'm not going to worry so much about the weight. I want to focus on being healthy. And, um, like you said, I mean, the weight will come if you focus on being healthy, <laughs> but, um, I found the documentary, uh, forks over knives and I watched it and I was like, oh my God, this is it. This is what I want to do. Codwell Ethelston, uh, is from the Cleveland clinic and where I go to the Cleveland clinic a lot and my family goes to the Cleveland clinic. And I know if he's talking about this. It's the right, it's the real deal because he's extremely intelligent. I also read uh, The Starch Solution and I watched The Game Changers and What the Health and they were all really good. And I was determined to bring my blood pressure down really by um, eating right. So I started, I was like, okay, I'm gonna start uh, um, plant-based and just um, work on just trying to eat plant-based. So I started it scrolling on what I eat in a day videos that I found you um i found emmy and sh i watched i watched your videos over all your videos and I, I you're so beautiful so it was it was so much fun to watch your videos so i'm like oh my gosh you know what you're talking about and um i didn't join your program right away i thought oh i don't know it's just another you know thing online i don't know if i can do this but i i couldn't i couldn't lose the weight i i just but i wanted to get healthy so we hit the pandemic hit and um i well i figured this is it i this is the best time i can't go out to eat i'm going to be at home preparing all my food i'm going to join this program and i'm going to do my best at it and i did i signed up and i was real i talked to my husband and i said i'm going to join emmy's program and he said well whatever makes you happy that's fine <laughs> go for it and so i did and um, it was the best thing I ever did. I've learned so much from it. Honest to God, I thought I knew a lot until I got on your program. I did it and it got easier and easier. And I was, honest to God, I know people say this all the time, but I really wasn't hungry. And I ate potatoes and I was like, Emmy, I'm eating potatoes and I'm, I'm losing weight every week. I It, it was great because I was never hungry. And um, I told, um, my family that I was doing that and everyone's like, oh, you know, be careful. You're going to, you know, vegan diets, you're going to, um, you know, you might lack uh, vitamins and stuff. And even my doctor said that he thought that was kind of weird. And I said, well, I'm going to, after I get done, I did the master's program. And when I got done with the master's program, I did, I had another physical and, um, I got my blood work done and he called this has another doctor but he said i has never seen such a change my i was worried about my glucose levels because of all the potatoes that i was eating and um it was slower than it was when i was on keto it was every all my numbers are like great and i'm like okay this is awesome i'm never changing because i i feel so much better my blood pressure is really low now and I'm on the I'm on the lowest dose of blood pressure medicine now that you could be on, and I am trying to get off of it. But I'm still working on it. But um, I lost about 17 pounds, and it was literally effortless. I didn't think I was going to lose it because I was eating so much. The one thing is, I got to eat. if I'm hungry, I could eat. It wasn't like you're starving. Wait till you know one o'clock or noon, then you can eat your lunch. Then you got to wait till six. Emmy, you said if you're hungry, eat, you know, stay on plan and I just eat what's, you know, just smaller portions of what you would eat normally and I did and it, it works. It was great. Um, and um, I kept another thing that was big was the my hunger scale. <laughs> Never paid attention to that. Always eating when I'm bored and stressed, and I'm still working on that. But um, it's very. I, I listen to my hunger scale. Am I really hungry, or am I um, wanting something else? Because I've always been a foodie. I've always loved food, and I. And um, now I think about it all the time. Like, okay, I'm not really hungry. I'm not going to go to the kitchen and start you know, finding something to eat just because I'm bored. But that's a it's a huge, a huge one for me because and I think for so many of us is we're always eating when we're not even really hungry, we just eat to eat. And it's fun. And it's just that. <laughs> but and another thing was, um, it was so easy, I could um, make my meals so simple, nothing was hard. It was all um, just so um, easy to prepare. I but I feel like I have such a good foundation now that um, I can 
continue on and I know I can do it. I feel so good about it. Beautiful. All right. Well, let's take it back a little bit to when you first discovered Whole Foods Plant Based. I remember you saying to me that um, before we started working together, you were like, I'm loving the foods. I always, I start with the best intentions, but then I fail. And I don't like the word fail. I always say you never lose, you learn. But for the sake of this conversation, what did that look like when you would quote unquote fail before we started working together? Oh, when I would fail, I would end up eating what uh, I was trying to be on plan and I would end up being so hungry that I could, I remember like being so hungry that I was just like, oh, you know, forget it. I'm going to McDonald's because I'm, I'm going to get a vanilla cone or something because I just so, it was just because I was depriving myself all the time. And, and the low carbs was a disaster because you're literally craving the carbs that you need. You know, I, 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 to get into ketosis was like a, a nightmare for me. It never really, you know, and it just, I didn't feel like it was really right to get um, into the, uh, you know, where you're literally almost starving yourself. Cause that's the only way I ever got close to that was when I was so hungry. And uh, another thing was the fasting. I, I felt like that's not for me either because it would just lead to overeating and binging because you are like so hungry. That's why I like your program because you, you don't have to think about food so much it's, and just eat the good stuff. I love potatoes. <laughs> you love potatoes, but I remember you'd send me messages and I did. Me, I'm afraid to eat potatoes. I was. The first week I was like, okay, I'm going to eat all these potatoes. I bought all these potatoes and I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, I can't. everybody says they're just, they're loaded, you know, with solid sugar and um, they're really bad you know and i but i did it i did exactly on the program and oh, i lost weight so easily it just kept coming i lost like a lot the first week too and i and i ate a lot of potatoes so it, it does work you know i triple a action alleviates anxiety yes right and so i, I remember saying to you you have to just do it do you're it you're gonna know unless you just do it you're never that's what you said i said emmy i don't know is it gonna when i was talking to you is it gonna work and you said it's gonna work you're gonna it's gonna work and i was um i didn't know i didn't think but because i've tried so many things but i just gave my whole heart into it and uh it works it works and and i now i have a foundation that i can build from and um that's why the master's program was so nice for me because it taught me how to add in my um you know, my extra foods that I can slowly edit. And if I eat too many, then you got to take them away because you've got to watch, you know, there's a certain medium where you're going to, you get gain weight. If you, I learned how to do all of that. So now I'm trying to get back to the basics a little bit, but yeah, it's uh, very nice. And I like it a lot. The program. Now I feel so good when I'm eating this way because um, I have more energy and I think it's just getting rid of all that processed crap. It's bad for everybody. You just said something there, Amy, where you said, um, you know, right now I'm trying to get back to the foundation a little bit. And I know recently with your husband serving, things have been crazy at home right now, very stressful, a lot of emotions. And during these times, it's normal that sometimes our food is not the, the way that we want it to be. Mm -hmm. There's a lot going on and that's okay. Sometimes we we eat the way we don't want to and whatever, but it's all about getting back to this foundation and knowing that this foundation is here, mm -hmm. no matter what, you can rely on it. You can always come back to it. Yes. Yes. It's really good. And, um, I do want to add that, um, my dad has had, um, heart, some heart issues and he's had a heart surgery. He's doing great, but he had it at Cleveland and his uh, Cleveland doctor said to him, you need to be plant based. And he said, well, my, my daughter's doing that. And he said, well, you need to start having your daughter help you. So I'm working with my dad too. And um, we're working on it. I can't wait till um, the spring where we can have our, our big, we have a huge family garden and um, it's going to be nice because I'm really going to help my dad get, you know, to the basics with um, the vegetables and the right starches. He loves to make soups in his Instapot and he's really trying to um, do what I get, you know, I give him advice of how to make stuff. And I know you work with your dad too. <laughs> 
tell us more about that, Amy, because I know people listening, they are experiencing the same thing with their parents. They so badly want to help them out. And it looks like you are being successful. I'm trying. We're working on it. It's still a process, but um, yeah, I thought, dad, he's right. You've got, you know, their Cleveland is big on plant-based, the, Cle the Cleveland clinic. And I, and you know, they're one of the best places. And um, I said, you gotta do this, dad. It's really good for your heart. I, I literally could not believe my, all my numbers were like, really um they were never horrible but they were so much better when they did it the you know the after i got done with the master's program when i did my blood work again but um yeah we just um my dad will always tell me what kind of, he loves to read about all the different vegetables what what's good about all the vegetables and um <laughs> well yeah and, and on the on the note of your levels your doctor had said to you as you noted that you know oh i don't know you're gonna have deficiencies and then yeah he did the, diet, the doctor and you kind of showed him when you i did because he was like that. really weird like oh a vegan diet well you know that's you got to be careful and that's literally how he he and that just shows that they don't get the um medic they don't get the um nutrition information that they should honestly i don't think they do because i don't think he had a really had much of a clue of what I was trying to do. And my weight came way down too. So I, I was like, see, I did it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that's kind of, that's scary to have somebody in a white coat say to you, yeah, oh, I don't know about that. Honestly, you know what they said a while ago, they told me to um, literally um, eat chicken wings all the time because it sounds so funny, but they said, cause they're no carbs. So you should concentrate on eating wings all the time. <laughs> that was the weirdest. <laughs> I don't go to that doctor anymore, but I, but I thought that was like, oh, I don't know. I was like, oh, okay. Chicken wings. That's wonderful. Real healthy. <laughs> yeah. And that's a medical profession and that's honest to God. Mm -hmm. Truth. Yeah. So, but yeah, if you want to feel good about, you know, just feel healthy, it just makes you feel so energized and good. And I, I can uh, do a lot more now. And, um, and now I'm into, um, I got my own treadmill now. So now I'm starting to get into my walking, but I never exercised that much either. I did, I always do walking and I, um, I'm very active with my kids and everything, but I, I'm i not an, a runner or anything, but um, you don't have to do that at all. I just concentrated on eating. And then um, now I'm into trying to get health, get healthier with that, but it's not for weight loss. I know that because people think that exercising, you know, is just you know a good thing for weight loss but i, I believe that um it's mostly from your diet because you said that it's um what you eat basically i think 80 percent of it right mm -hmm. do you want to tell us a little bit about how you navigate your going to your lake house yes i go to my lake well it's not my lake house my mom and dad's lake house but we go there um we'll start going there in may and um it's about an hour drive and it's really nice and we go there oh almost every a lot of weekends not every weekend but i bring a dish i bring several dishes i bring tons of food and i'll i'll make a big quinoa salad i'll make a bean salad i always bring stuff that i can have if they're going to have other stuff because i know and the kids they all i'll make a bean salad and i um spice it up with um all you know lime and cilantro and everything and i'll tell you what the kids they like that too and um i have every time i go there i bring a giant cooler and um everybody likes my dishes so i bring all kinds of, actually i mean they're your recipes a lot of them <laughs> yeah. yeah like the mango um quinoa salad and um yeah that's how i navigate at the lake house i try to uh not eat so much junk and we try to keep that out of the you know off the counter all the time because the kids will non-stop just eat that and so we try to keep that away but um when we have meals and i'm telling we have eight 20 people in our family with me and my sisters and um so we all you know make dishes and um i've gotten so many compliments on all your recipes actually my dad makes your recipes your you know my dad my dad made your um risotto for the holidays and he said that was the best risotto i have ever made and i don't i never heard of nutritional yeast but i really he loved it i said that's emmy's recipe <laughs> Well, he probably put in the secret ingredient of love. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> so, but the air fryers are my best friend and I make a lot of stuff with the Instapot too. Mm -hmm. I know that during our work together, oh, my heart broke. You lost a furry yeah. friend. Yes, I know. And that, and I, I was thinking about that today when, <laughs> just because I remember you guys helped me. The Facebook group is so supportive. Every, all these people are so supportive. I actually have people writing me now about my husband that are in the groups, you know, and I'm, I'm not even an active member, but I'm still on that group all the time. But um, yeah, you told me, I said, I'm so upset and I don't, I just felt like um, eating, I guess, comfort foods, but you, you made me think about it because remember the answer is not in the refrigerator. <laughs> it's it's true it's true and we're so close to our pets and everything and it was like losing a family member i had her for 18 years so but yeah i, I that's something you have to always think about um so we try to find primary foods that are other primary foods that are other than eating like um doing other things that fulfill our hearts i try to tell my mom and dad about that too so yeah, that was tough. Oh, that is I never know. an easy thing to go through. I, and I think the important thing is, you know, you do as much as you can with those mm -hmm. primary foods. And if it so happens that you turn to a food, you know, to get that temporary mm -hmm. relief and you, you get the high from it, being able to just go back, forgive yourself for what happened or what I say, you know, you, do, you don't have to forgive yourself because eating isn't a crime. You haven't mm -hmm. done anything wrong, but to just be able to pick up and move on from it and learn yeah you taught me so much about just not like you said eating's not a crime but just to move forward and you know one day at a time and don't i was always so hard on myself and it's all or nothing not anymore i feel like i've changed a lot i don't know just i don't know if it's because i'm getting older too but i have changed so much i mean you're like an older person and you're like an old person's soul and a young young girl but you are you're, i told my mom how intelligent you are for how young you are well thank so, you yeah oh emmy another thing that i do want to add is your monday q a's uh -huh. every monday i still if i'm home i want i listen to you but my kids know five o'clock Emmy's on mom Emmy's on and they listen to you we put your the phone in the kitchen and we're I'm usually preparing food around then we're listening to you and the kids literally they want to listen to you every oh, Monday they know okay. and Brian goes tell Emmy I said hi tell Emmy I said hi <laughs> I feel like Oprah on it. I know. <laughs> I know. Oh, and another thing is um that is funny is that Brian always will remind me my youngest mom would Emmy approve of that food? <laughs> I need to hire him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, but yeah, the Q and A's are really helpful too, because there's a lot of questions you have and um, it's nice that you put those all in one big group and then you can uh, listen to that and you hear everybody else's questions and it's, it's really nice. I like the community that you have. It's, it's great. The people are all so nice in it and you get to see everybody's pictures of their foods and, all the struggles that they're going through too. I love doing the Q&A because I could just answer everybody back individually, but so much learning. It's so oh, yeah. a learning opportunity to hear, you know, people say, I just got an answer to a question that I didn't even know that I had. Mm -hmm. But exactly. now I asked, I have, yes. I have an answer now. Yes, yeah, that's true. I There's a lot of things that I'm like, oh, okay. Now I, you know, I, I didn't know that. And there's, I have learned so much just from, you know, all that, all those Q and A's I've learned a lot. So mm -hmm. I made books of your programs. I, the bind three ring binders, and I actually go back to them and I read them year week by week. So I kind of, I'm kind of like back in the slim on starch, reminding myself, kind of reviewing it, but it's really nice to have that. And it took me a long time to make <laughs> <laughs> a lot of a lot of um, printing your stuff but it, it's worth it so I give that I gave that to my mom and dad to use it so they could read it and stuff so just to get your, your recipe <laughs> so. that you're spreading the good word you worked so hard during our work together yeah and would you give us some insight and some tips for how you worked through snacking because I know that that was something that you were struggling with was the snacking and you are Snack. not alone in that. Uh, so talk to us about, you know, what you would say to somebody who's struggling 
anything that's helped you get okay. that snacking, especially with having kids, there's so oh. food everywhere. Yeah. First of all, as far as the kids go, um, I just figured um, when I started Slim on Starch, I knew uh, these are the foods that I'm not going to eat. Some of the junk, it's not good for my body. Um, like you said, your our body is like our Lamborghini. You wouldn't want to put bad fuel. That's how I remind myself as far as that you don't want to put bad. Your body is your Lamborghini. You don't want to put crap in it. So, but with the snacking is, um, it was hard. I mean, I definitely had a lot of um, trial and error, but um, my hunger scale, I, uh, um, Kiki would tell me to really think about your hunger scale and am I really hungry or am I trying to just, I'm bored or, you know, and I, um, so I tried to stay a little busier during the times that I would normally think about snacking. Three o'clock is my worst time. Three to before dinner, I would always, um, my husband would be coming home, not now, but he'd be coming home and he would be making all kinds of snacks and um but i tried to just have a um like a lacroix and would talk to him and that would be our time to talk together but i i stopped eating any of his stuff because it's mostly not plant-based you know like cheese and well pretzels but um yeah I, so i just really tried to work it on my um hunger scale and if i do if i am hungry i would try to eat an apple or something and then um <laughs> or like some vegetables and stuff because if that's if you are hungry to eat that and then um usually i was fine but that was a that's uh that is a big thing and it's hard but i but i don't deprive myself if i am hungry i do eat us i do eat because if you're just starving your body's trying to tell you it needs something so instead of just you know having a huge meal later i just have something little at three o'clock, that is the hour for everybody. And that mm -hmm. was my mom's, she would all, that was always what she would say. She go three o'clock, four o'clock, it all goes downhill. I got- It is, you feel like, I always felt like I was a failure after that. I would try so hard to do so well until three o'clock. And then I felt like I must be too tired or something, but it all just, oh, I would all just always eat bad after that, mm -hmm. you know, but um, now I would plan, I planned meals in advance. So I knew what I was going to have. And I still do that. Yeah. I always, I always have something to pull out of the refrigerator with, um, you know, like your chili and stuff like that to have. So if you're really hungry, you could have something like that. It's e a little easier now that I'm getting back on um, track because my husband is not home. So I'm this main person cooking and um, my kids are, you know, eating healthier and stuff now because they have to <laughs> i'm mean, like i'm gonna try you know just uh and i'm not gonna you know tell them they have to eat everything on their plates but that's what you know we're just gonna i'm gonna offer it to them all the time because i think that it's it's important mm -hmm. and you know what's so funny about that three o'clock hour is the reason why it's so tough for everybody is because there's the social construct that you have to wait until supper and maybe you can have a small snack, but it's not six o'clock yet. You know, mm -hmm. you can't eat right now. What are you thinking? It's three. I know. <laughs> but in Slim on Starch, we go, you're hungry. Who cares what time it is? I know. He is telling you it's time to eat. It's like if you had to pee and you said, well, no, the toilet's closed. It's three o'clock. The toilet doesn't open. I know. That's so... <laughs> Uh, yeah, we're always thinking about, okay, it's just engraved in everybody's minds. You can't eat till it's time for dinner and, and, and let, wait till you have your lunch. But now um, I usually have like a mid-morning something when I'm hungry before I eat my next meal. But I just call them like smaller meals and um, and try not to think so much about all the snacking. Yeah, you have those mini meals. And listen, I get it because I remember growing up, I, the snacking, the three o'clock was like, Emmy, you are not eating at three o'clock because you're going to eat and then it's time for supper and I've paid for all this food for supper and then you mm -hmm. sit down and you don't eat it. So I get why we're conditioned this way, but mm -hmm. we're not kids anymore. I know. We're adults and we can make the shot. We can call the shots for ourselves. If it's three o'clock, we can have a mini meal. And if we're going to have supper with our family later, we'll just have a mini meal now and then save some room in our stomach so we can eat more later. Mm -hmm. And just rewiring our brain and untrue training the child in us that thinks that we're not allowed to eat at three o'clock you know so, we can eat yeah 
Mm -hmm. It's so true. So true. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's just like it is, it's engraved in your mind and you have to just kind of like concentrate on your hunger scale and just, you know, if you're hungry and if not, you shouldn't be eating because your body really doesn't need it right now. <laughs> Now, I know that we had talked a little bit about how, you know, your husband is away serving right now. And so could you talk to us about how you are coping with that outside of turning to food? Um, yeah, well, um, what I'm doing is I'm, I, I have a little indoor garden right now that I, I love. And what I'm going to be doing is really concentrating on my garden because I like that. And um, also, we were really busy with sports. Today, we're, this is our first, finally, we, we're done now with basketball. So I was kind of coping with just staying busy. I also visit family a lot. Um, I just got back from Florida. My parents, now they're on their way home, but I, I went to see them again and um, stay busy. We have, they had a beautiful track and we walked every day. I walked with my mom and dad and um i love i love walking outside and that is um i i love walking i take my nephew walking all the time he's the he's the 11 month old he loves going for walks in his stroller so that i try to just stay focus on that and focus on staying busy because um i'm busy enough with the kids but just that is what i do stay I'm busy sure you are you know good clean fun and mm -hmm. nourishment outside of food. We're so non-negotiable about our secondary foods. You know, mm -hmm. I have to have breakfast. I have to have lunch. I have to have my secondary foods. Why aren't we as non-negotiable about our primary foods? Oh, I know. We, yes. You can nourish on primary foods every day and you have primary foods up the wazoo. It sounds like whether you like it or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. That's so important. Family and, um, friends and being with the kids and that I have um the pets I have actually Hazel's the same age as your two kitties <laughs> Hazel came in I remember you telling us she was on top of the Christmas tree um, <laughs> and you're like my win for the week is that Hazel was on top of the Christmas tree and she did not fall over <laughs> she didn't she is um, exactly the same size as your um tiger and bear literally like every time I see them I'm like oh it's just like Hazel but Hazel came into our life um she just showed up and after Dolly had died and I felt like it was kind of like a sign and my kids kept taking care of her and um she was just a little tiny thing and so we brought her in so she's one of our big primary foods so she's such a little sweetheart <laughs> but we love our pets so um yeah I stay pretty busy I love that you are, you know, it, it appears through your journey, just speaking more kindly to yourself. I think that mm. all of us, we're so hard on ourselves. Mm -hmm. Would we ever speak to our kids that way, our best friend that way, our parents that way? No, but we're so hard on ourselves. And I think that was a big part of your journey is just learning how to oh, be kind to yes. yourself. Yes, yes. Amy, you had, I watched your video today on self-image. I'll tell you what, that it was a very good video because that is so true. Um, you know, like our closest people in our lives, do we think about exactly how they look and everything? Um, no, we don't. And um, we're always worried about getting the next five pounds off and we're always worried about anything like that. That I, I That's completely true. You know, when we have to just be good and happy with ourselves, even when I first started your journey, I thought I'm... I love my body for what it is now. I'm going to be um, making it healthy, but I have to be happy for where, where I am now. And I never was like that when I was younger. I was always really hard on myself. <laughs> so I've come a long way. Yeah, and you you just glow. You're so happy. Oh, I'm so happy you. that I that I snagged you for this because I know oh, I was so nervous. Lady. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Is there anything else you wanted to say? Did you have anything written down that you didn't note or? No, I pr I think I covered everything. I if you are still watching, then comment Superwoman because Amy is seriously Superwoman, having four kids, taking care of an 11 month old, and still looking so fabulous, happy, healthy, and energetic. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and meeting Amy, and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Woo!